hello there everyone so for day three of our, uh, our little daily vlog things i'm actually going to be going through my favorite games from my childhood and so i played a ton of stuff when i was young it's pretty much as soon as i got home from school i'd just go and play a video game like straight away it's basically just my hobby and always has been since i was a kid but there were some games in particular that really stood out to me and we have our special little flamingo backpack full of our childhood memories in here so if we if we reach in the first game that comes to mind is my favorite pokemon game series or sort of region of all time which is actually pokemon platinum but either way platinum was by far my favorite main series pokemon game purely for the fact that it had the generation that I enjoyed the most, I enjoyed the environment, I enjoyed the music the most, and everything like that. And again, this is coming from someone that's been playing Pokemon games literally since the, like, the year I was born, <laughs> sort of thing. So Gen 4, Platinum, Diamond Pearl were by far, like, some of my favourite games of all time. Plus, Gen 4 was the generation that introduced trading and all the online features, so... It, it's a thing close to my heart, since trading is pretty much the only thing I really do in Pokemon games anymore. And then the second, second game in our goodie bag. Oh, what is it? Ah, here we go. We have, it is another Pokemon game. But this is part of the Mid Mystery Dungeon series. This is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. This also sort of goes in with Time and Darkness as well, because th these are the games that have the Grovile line for anyone that's ever played them. And these games are actually super sad. And there's a lot that you can do, like side missions, leveling up all the Pokemon and stuff like that that gets you unlocks. So Sky is a game that's close to my heart as well. And all the special dungeons that they introduced was great. And the mystery dungeon games, I honestly don't know whether they're the number one or like, I think they might even be ahead of the main series games for me because, I don't know, I just had a lot of fun with them and all the little stories and character arcs and stuff like that. And Jesus, we have a lot of games in this bag. Holy! Well, not that many considering, but uh, first game in here is this one for the GameCube, which, if I move back into position, we actually have Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I'll probably get a, like, a clearer picture up of this. But this game was, you know, the mechanics when you play them now, they're really shoddy, they're not that good. But the whole story in general was pretty fun. I enjoyed the way that they played out, especially as a kid. But they also had the chow part where you could like raise your own chow and stuff like that. And I've done tons of videos on this game late in the past as well on the channel, but... Yeah, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is a game very close to my heart, honestly. Like, you can make Chows do karate, for goodness sake. Like, what else could you ask for in a video game? And then, another one here, which I have. Oh, here we go. We've got a, another GameCube game. But this one here is another game that I've actually played on the channel in the past. This is actually Star Fox Adventures in the Flesh. And a lot of people said that this was basically just a rip-off of Zelda and it wasn't that good. But this game was basically Star Fox, like Fox McCloud combined with dinosaurs. Which, if you think about the appeal to children, that's pretty good. Like, I loved dinosaurs, lizards, stuff like that as a kid. And this game had everything. It had Fox McCloud, all the characters I loved, on a planet full of dinosaurs. But like I said, I played a ton of this on the channel as well. I did have to stop my series after a while because all the videos sort of corrupted like near the final, like the ending of the game, but genuinely I loved this game as a kid and I'll probably still come back to it every couple of years or so and play through it again. Oh god, no wonder this wasn't in the bag, but this is a game series that I enjoyed. This is a PlayStation game, but... This one here is the Dark Souls 2 Collector's Edition. So as you can imagine, the Dark Souls games are really where I'm going with this. But look at this, this fat off figurine. You actually might not be able to see it through the plastic. I actually don't want to pull him out of the plastic because I feel like I'll break something if I do. But here's a like gigantic figurine of him. Like you can see how big that is in comparison to the size of me. 
but yeah, the Dark Souls games were games that at one point were just like seen as like only hardcore air quotes gamers could play them. But Dark Souls 1 and 2 in particular were games I spent quite a lot of time in, honestly. And all the different special lore and hidden things in the games that you could do were... It, the game lasted hundreds and hundreds of hours, especially if you were interested in speedrunning it. But Dark Souls games in general, I can't really even be a favourite. I have so many memories from 1. But I feel like Dark Souls 2 did improve on a lot of things at the same time, so probably Dark Souls 2 takes the cake for my favourite out of the set, but I really did enjoy those games just as a whole. Alright, so we do actually have a couple more inside a flamingo bag, and the first one I found here, what is this one? This is Borderlands 2. So, for anyone that's played Borderlands, they have some really questionable game mechanics, and it is MA15 plus, so it is more for a more mature audience than like younger kids or like casual gamers. But the co op aspects in this game were super fun, and the game again lasted quite a long time, especially if you wanted to do all the side missions and that. And the art style is super weird, which is definitely an interesting thing for a lot of games because you know, if you have an interesting mechanic or something like that, it really does draw you in, and I really enjoyed both Borderlands 1 and 2, despite some of the glitches and bugs and stuff like that that were kind of prominent in the games. And then this next game that we have here is, I have Brotherhood out at the moment. Again, I wish it wasn't so bright so you could actually see what I was showing you, but the thing was, Brotherhood was kind of weird. I did enjoy the Ezio storyline, like, pretty much the most out of the Assassin's Creed games, but at the same time, you needed the, the sort of knowledge of all the games to really put the story together properly, and I really did enjoy all of the Assassin's Creed games, honestly. <laughs> like, despite how many people say, oh, they're all the same, they never change, you know, you can learn a lot about history in general just through playing these games, and... You know, I've got a lot of memories on there, and I did play a little bit of the online uh, multiplayer as well, which wasn't too bad, but Assassin's Creed games are actually not as bad as some people try and tell you. So, the final game that I have here is a game that I actually spent quite a lot of time in, honestly, when I was, like, in, what, well, year 8 or 9 in school or something like that, I think it was, but this is another collector's edition for this game, but this is a game that I will pretty much never ever forget. This is, <coughs> oh Jesus Christ, this is huge. But this is the Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception Explorer Edition, but it's basically just a huge collector's edition with a chest in it. But the Uncharted 3 games in general were a, well, the Uncharted games in general, I should say, were a game series that I invested uh, not thousands of hours in, but I did invest like hundreds and hundreds of hours in, kind of like my Pokemon stuff as well. But, thing is, I met a lot of people playing that game, and I used to play against some of the best players in the world in that game, kind of like what I do in Paladins currently. But Uncharted in general is... I met so many people, I in fact met my fiancé playing Uncharted, surprisingly enough, which is kind of weird. But, um, the Uncharted games, I used to love playing them, and I don't even know, it was super buggy, but it was mostly the multiplayer aspects of the games that really appealed to me, because the Uncharted 3 story was pretty pants, Uncharted 2 was like the game of the year at the time, but Uncharted 3, just for the multiplayer and the amount of fun I had in it, probably one of my favourite games, literally of all time. So those are just some of my favourite games from my childhood, and I have an entire games room full of games, and games in the other room as well. I have like too many games to remember off the top of my head, but those are some of the games that really, just thinking about the games that I really enjoyed, those were the standout ones, but again, I've played thousands of different titles of games over time, and I've played stuff like League of Legends, Counter-Strike, uh, Binding of Isaac and other PC games, because the ones that I listed were mostly console, but, you know, including the story and everything else in those games, I think it sort of resonates a little bit more with, like, my old memories, you know. But, 
no, I played a ton of stuff over time, and I'll probably continue to play more and more. If I get a Switch, I'll end up playing a lot more games on that as well. But, yo! That should do me for today. There was day three, and... You know, maybe I'll end up revisiting all of these games someday on the channel. We'll have to see, but for now... Thanks a lot for joining me today, and if you have anything else you want me to do videos on, make sure you leave a comment or PM me or something on like Discord, and I'll take a look at it and see see if I want to do stuff on it. But for now, thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, I will see you then.